Welcome back to Satisfactory. We are at the uh, fuel generator plant, which I have completed since the last episode. Um, we have uh, the uh, empty canisters here going into this container, or rather out of this container and into this container. And then we have the bottled water going over here, together with the heavy oil, residue into these refineries here that are then processing into diluted packaged fuel and uh, of course the uh, packaged water is also being used here and i just built a direct connection over to these refineries which are then unpackaging the fuel and also outputting empty canisters and then the fuel is sent over by this pipeline divided into two so there are 10 generators on each side and the uh, empty uh, canisters are sent back on this belt to the container. I think a few passed us by, yes. And that's about what is to see here. There isn't... take that away. There isn't really anything in fun here. They have a very... Uh, I like the animation on these things. Our power grid has been extended to... Uh, 6,000 megawatts in capacity, which is uh, about 10 times as much as we use in the factory when it's in uh, rest mode, hibernation mode. I haven't got the foggiest what the actual power usage of the, fac of the factory is currently if I turn everything on. So, oh, um, here's a little fun tidbit that I made. If you want to have a pipeline going on a specific angle, you can make these uh, funky structures like these. I'm not sure why I bothered with that, since that pipe isn't straight anyways, but uh, it looks fun. So, there is that. Uh, let's head back to the refinery, where I had to uh, do some modifications, if the autosave will finish, thank you. I've also cleaned up the pipes a bit here so that it's easier to actually drive underneath them by making vertical pipelines connections like the ones we see here. I've done the same somewhere over there. Um, now that wasn't necessary. What on earth is that car doing? Will you stop? Thank you. So I had to put up a few more refineries, uh, and I don't think I have more room for refineries here. Because uh, the final part that I needed was copper sheets, and I realized that the best way of uh, getting copper sheets would be to use the alternate recipe for steamed copper sheets. I have this pipeline coming in underneath here with a pump here from these two water extractors down here. And here you can see my uh, annoyances at the um, pipe outlets not being on the same angle if you put them face to face. I'm not sure why. It might be because I've placed them somewhat out of sync, but it doesn't really appear to be that much out of sync. So, yeah. I have some foundations that the pipes are running on, and I think I'm making a total of, with this one set at 67%, which is rounded up. Uh, let's see if I actually added that to the spreadsheet or not. Yeah, I have 10.67 refineries, which is consuming 240 copper ingots and 240 water for a grand total of 240 copper sheets. I didn't intend to do that. And uh, the 240 copper sheets is barely within the tolerance limit of what we actually need because we need 220 in our... Uh, Okay. our next project I also uh, went out into the wilds and um, set up 
new um, Caterium mine outpost. I'm not gonna take the recording while driving out there, so I'll drive out there and show you where the outpost is and pause the recording while I do the driving. So I'll see you very soon. Here we are. Um, finding this node was um, slightly annoying. I had to uh, drive around and actually find it. So we are out near our uh, sulfur mines, which you can see down there. We also have the uh, geothermal power plant down there. And it's weirdly situated. It's a pure node. Of course, it's helpful. So I had to... Uh, thought it was up through the... Uh, near the uh, coal power plants that I've built. I've used this... Uh, lift to get the uh, ore down and I have a smelting outpost down there now in case any of you are actually interested in seeing where this uh, outpost this node is I'll bring you down the car to the um, where I actually drove I, I initially drove through that poison field thinking that oh it might be up there but no it wasn't so this location here has some uh, rocks that you need to uh, blow away with an obelisks, I think. And you can drive up here by going on this um, ledge thing here, which also has one of the big angry doggos, usually patrolling. He doesn't seem to be respawning anymore now though. So I then took the Caterium ore down with the uh, lift and uh, put it onto the belts there. I also removed a fair amount of vegetation here so that I didn't have to drive into the trees all the time. Oh, and there's a cave there that has a purple slug inside it, inside that, uh, those, behind those leaves over there. There's of course a fair amount of spiders there as, as, there as well. And the cave comes out at the other side over there. It's a beautiful cave, but in case the spiders have respawned, I don't want to go in there. So I bring the uh, Caterium ore down, and then I smelt it into ingots in the usual 10 point... I think it's 66 here as well. And I think it's the first one that I underclocked. Or maybe I forgot to underclock. Not that it really matters. Yeah, this one is clocked to 66%. So then I take the ingots and I bring them back to the base. I'll just pause the recording again while driving back home. And here we are back at the base. So the ingots are then taken up from the uh, bus via the lift there and um, I don't really need the car currently so I can probably just leave it here and then it's uh, processed into quick wire which I uh, make in these facilities uh, 15 of them which produces a grand total of 780 and these I take down underneath here. This belt. Which, of course, it's fun to ride the Mark V belts because they are so speedy. I take it down here, out through the, um, the wall there. That's a conveyor wall. And then I have this interesting lift contraption here to make sure that I get it on the correct angle so that I get it into this container here. Now I don't think I actually need this quick wire, so because I had miscalculated something. But um, it's going to be nice to have. I haven't put up the uh, the lifts that need to go up all the way for the four final containers here. But uh, we'll get to that. Uh, we have a 
temporary uh, hypertube network set up inside the base now. I might leave it too, actually. And this is where we're going to be working currently. I'm going to be making uh, heat sinks, 30 of them, to be uh, accurate. And for that, we need uh, 120 alclad aluminium sheets and 240. No. 210 rubber so i've just set it up the uh the basic um facilities for this and i've made the uh hole where i'm going to take it down we need to get the alclad aluminium sheets and the uh, rubber from mall b i believe we are already sending out rubber yes but the question is or rather, it's not a question. It is a fact. What we can do here is, if we use this same bus that I'm pushing the rubber on, and we use a splitter. I think this will be correct. And then we remove these see that I'm removing the correct belt here now. Yep. Remove these belts. I'm a bit worried that it might be too far. The total rubber we're going to need exceeds the capacity of a Mark III uh, belt, so we're going to have to have a Mark IV belt. Does that connect to the splitter? No, it does not. We have to connect it to that, and then we need to connect that up to this. Uh, however, uh, a Mark I belt should be fine in this distance. Uh, this is also something that I've done. I've removed the crystal computer um, assemblers and replaced them with three Caterium computer manufacturers. And no, a Mark I is not enough. It needs to be Mark II. I'm not sure why I've made this Mark 1 in the first place. It would be Mark 2 all the way. Since we need... Maybe Mark 2 isn't enough. 45, 90, 135. No, this needs to be a Mark 3. Let's fix that while I'm here. Mark 1 lift should be fine, though. I just hooked up that to the already existing belt going underneath the base, so I didn't see the point in uh, making another one for this purpose. So that's the rubber. Uh, now we can clean up these because we don't need these. Ah, there's a container up there as well. that much in my inventory. Actually, I do. Um, I'm more container. Make sure. Nope, there doesn't seem to be more containers. And the rubber is taken out. This belt. This is circuit boards. Where is the rubber taken out? There? That looks like rubber. Yep. And 330. I think that in the Hope so. It actually might not be enough. I might have miscalculated here. Because I only have 195 rubber left. Well, some of these products that I'm making now, like... Um, 
radio control unit and turbo motors. Not exactly like as if those are going to be um, in high demand. And the same goes for the heat sinks. So I think we can. Uh, I think we're good with uh, with uh, an underproduction of rubber. I have no inclination of uh, going over the rubber and uh, get would be a massive job. That was not the correct one, but uh, that's fine. We can remove all of these splitters. And then upgrade this to a Mark IV. Same with the lift. Go along the way here and upgrade to Mark IV. There we go. And that's the rubber solved. Now the next product we need for the heat sinks is the Alclat aluminium sheets. Now I have, that was something that I didn't show out at the refinery outpost, I have set up a new outpost at the um, top of the mountain there where there is, um, okay so we can, there, there is a bauxite pure node up there. That was a heck of a project to get because uh, the nasties that were up there were uh, severe. So I, um, I think I killed four or five of those nasty space goats. But um, they died for certain. So that's that's not a problem. I need this to be by both of those. Perfect. This turns and twists all the way around. Now, uh, to get this up to the correct height. It's going to be challenging. Because I have no idea what the height is. I'll just build a stack of them and wing it to the straightness of the belt. We'll use a Mark III conveyor here. Oh, definitely there. Can remove those. Uh, so anyways, why I put up that uh, outpost is so that if we need more um, aluminium, because we're going to use our entire production. We produce 120, and 120 is our current production for uh, outclad aluminium sheets. So I'm going to have to be careful with that. Um, but the end product that we get from the heat sinks are turbo motors and radio control units. And it's not like I'm going to be producing those. Uh, in vast quantities. I intend to fill up a container and when I have that container filled I'm going to be taking out a stack here and there very rarely. So I don't think we need more alclad aluminium sheet production. Um, but in case we do I have the space for it and I have the bauxite available. Uh, it just requires setting up which of course is the uh, not so fun part of it because setting up the uh, aluminium uh, while an interesting challenge uh, it's still a bit um, let's say interesting okay so then one stackable conveyor there and we can hook that up to this one now it's a matter of seeing where do we hook up it's got to be on this angle then we need to ensure that we this angle the correct almost there's one wrong Uh, 
and I think one, two, three, four, five. So that should be fine. Six, I believe. Two, three, four. Yeah, that should be fine. Connect that up to that. And in terms of rubber, we're going to need 110. So Mark 3 belt should be fine here as well. can use the middle of the uh, accommodation so one two three four five I think I'll just put it here instead of going all the way three four six then hook that up to there and this one hook up that and we can remove these because we don't need them anymore. Okay, now. So that would be three, four, five, six. Three, four, five. Just so we get this correctly. Now let's hook up these to those. It's a nice little straight line, so we can just remove the excess splitters. Like so. And then we can continue to hook up these. Like so. We do the same with the other ones. Each of these requires 70 rubber and 40 aluminium sheets. The rubber is on the lower one, so that needs to be a Mark II lift. And the other one can be a Mark 1 lift, but I'll just make it a Mark 2 lift, because... It's not that I'm in a dire lack of resources at this point of the game. So there we have the uh, Alclad aluminium sheets and the rubber inserted into the assemblers. Now we need power. That's a good idea to have. Come on. I think that I want these to be Mark II power poles. I'm not going to build mergers, I'm going to build power poles. It should be fine. And get up to the actual assemblers as well. I wonder if I should set the autosave to be 10 minutes instead of 5 minutes, at least when I'm recording, because it is quite disruptive. So now these are producing the uh, heat sinks. And uh, this should start making dents in our power production. Oh yes, definitely. Because now there's a lot of stuff that is uh, being activated to produce the rubber, the alclad aluminium sheets, and... Uh, yeah, that, there, there is many things going on now. Now, I want this to be there, I think. I'm not going to bother using... Maybe I am, just for the sake of having it look uniform. Two. Three is enough. The elevator can come down. Should be good. It's just easier to walk underneath them. It's done like this. We put up a few lifts, which we also have to 
make belts for this specific location because that distance is farther away than I normally built. But I built it at, at that distance uh, because of where I want the lift to go down. Now we need to build fencing. And we can use a regular Mark 1 lift here. I doubt that's gonna work. I'm not sure if it's encroaching on the um, fence or whatever it is encroaching on, but that's going to work, so that's fine. So let's drag this down. And then it's just a matter of walking backwards to get the angle correct. I have replaced uh, multiple of the foundations here because I knew that I was going to be doing this specific work. So, um, but I didn't want to have that in the video because that's rather menial and actually quite boring move and then place new foundations okay so now we need to have a turn here I wonder if that's gonna make a straight line It's going to be as straight as I can get it, I think. Now we're going to run into some interesting logistical challenges here. I need these to get up there. And I wish that I could get them to align properly, but I cannot. So I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do this currently. What I do know is that we should place down foundations in this area. That rock is... Uh, undesirable. Let's place some more foundations. And I have no clue how I'm going to do this. But the first one, it's actually quite simple. I can remove that and Place, no, I don't want to place a foundation there. That's going to look weird. So let's just place a regular wall there. And I need to go up there. And build the belt. So that I get the lift correctly. Someone asked me in one of the comments why I am not using... Um, the um, the wall mounts and the reason why I'm not using the wall mounts is very simple they don't attach to foundations and I'm not a fan of walls I mean looks okay when you have them down here but it doesn't look pretty I actually find that I the foundation edges look better than the walls and that's even with using the um, the alternate walls, because you have the the other ones, uh, these ones, but in my opinion, those look even worse. Yes, I know I can I can adjust their color and everything, but now I'm gonna go with the uh, foundation look. I hope they add more variety in terms of walls. I like having the factories out in the open. I just find it more aesthetically pleasing. Approaching others clearance. Crap. Okay, well, uh, I need to build the uh, conveyor poles at the edge. I won't be able to use lifts on all of these, but at least the uh, end one I can use lifts. I had a major conundrum with where on earth am I going to put these because the um, 
the other mall is full. There isn't more room there. And I was looking around wondering, can I place down a third mall somewhere? But no matter where I looked, it just didn't look uh, like a, a good idea. I don't think that's going to work. So I ended up deciding that, okay, I'm going to put it here, but... Uh, doesn't look... How am I going to do this? It's one too close. That look, uh, that's not possible. Hmm. I mean, this is in a rather remote area of the base, and it, it's not really a major concern to me to have it look straight, but I can't even attach it looking crooked. Uh-uh. You know what? I want to rethink this. The problem is this one. But I think that one's going to be fairly easy. Because if I'm not mistaken, I can put a lift there. And it's going to attach directly. So that's good. But these ones, I actually think... I marked something that I shouldn't mark there. Uh, I actually think that I have to do this completely different. I think I have to do the um, alignment up there. But that solves my conundrum. So that's good. Um, wondering, how am I going to get room down here to, to get all these things aligned properly? Ah, I need the stackable conveyors to see the uh, height. So there. Now, that lift comes up there. Even if I put a stackable conveyor there and then I try to get it aligned, that won't work. So what I have to do here is let's see one, two, actually one, two, three, four, five. Does that work? Is that too close? Yeah, that's too close. Let's just go one by one and see when it snaps. Okay, I'm gonna have some fairly ugh, the wrong height. that height. Does that mean that I can build one closer? Yes, it does. Can I build even one more close? No. I'm gonna have some crooked belts up here, but that's fine. It doesn't look horrible, actually. It looks better than I thought it would be. And one other uh, advantage of this is that in the uh, underneath these of the base, I got this belt on a fairly, I think actually I might drag it over there instead. I'll do that. Because the main thing here is to leave room for the three other belts that are going to come in. we go. So there is, should be ample space for the three other belts that are going to come here with the products, as long as I build them sensibly, of course. Um, that's going to be... Uh, the challenge, I admit, because I don't know if there is room down here, since there is such small spacing. I mean, I can... 
know if that's going to look good. If I have something like Caterium wire running on a belt like this, it would... No, it would work, actually. Okay. I feel sorry for these snails. Taking away all source of sunlight for... What's above here? <laughs> yeah, no. I can't even put in some glass windows. I suppose I could. They, they shouldn't be concerned with whether or not it's... Uh, Big assembler is above. Um, now that's something I did not expect to happen. They actually have a hitbox. <laughs> okay. That is very peculiar and very funny. <laughs> okay. Oh well. Why not? Why not? Let's give them some here. Uh, would you guys stop picking me up? Building a skylight for you here. One needs to go. Very dark. Can't wait for them to add uh, lighting options into the game. Might be mods that have added that already, actually. But uh, I am playing unmodded, so I'm not about to add mods now. Here we go. Now they have a skylight, so they can get some light down here. The poor things. They're so cute. Okay, so we are producing heat sinks. Uh, it's time to clean up this area. Build the final fence. Like so. And... Perfect. Everything's fine. Making 30 heat sinks per minute, and we're going to need 27 and a half. So, we're going to have a little bit in excess, which is perfect. I have this temporary hypertube as well takes us to the mall. So here we are. Now before I end the episode, let's just quickly uh, go out to the um, refinery again. I won't bring the car, I'll just take the hypertube. I think it actually would be uh, taking, I think it would take more time if I went back and got the car. I'm still amused by that uh, obvious uh, poison thing inside of that mountain, uh, or outcropping mesa, whatever you want to call it. So as you can see the distance there, there there's a lift coming down there. And there's a fairly, uh, oh, save again. There we are. There's a fairly intricate, uh, amp system going up there. Um, I found that one way of transporting power, as I've also mentioned in previous episodes, is to build these, uh, uh ramps into the, uh, side of the mountain doesn't look half bad except for the power pole sticking out of the uh, the uh, bottom of the thing but that's okay oh there's a spider over there it's probably gonna come chasing me no I'm too far away I think that one was uh, protecting a slug that I've picked up at some point so we we get the uh, electricity transported up the mountainside there is spitter there? No, I've, it hasn't respawned. Good. I've been wondering if I could make uh, some kind of hypertube thing to get me up and down. 
I haven't connected the bauxite yet because I don't want it down there until I've made sure that I am very... Ouch. That hurt. Am I even... I don't have a jetpack. How is this going to end up, I wonder? I might die now. I might die horribly. Ha! Okay, well, let's not do that again. Huh. Minor lag spike there. <laughs> that actually uh, gave me a tingling sensation in my uh, stomach when I was falling there. Anyways, I haven't connected up the uh, the bulk site yet because to make sure that I know. Let's do this more carefully this time. That I know where it's actually going to go in the base down there. Because I'm probably going to make uh, the uh, those six refineries that are making a Lumina solution. Uh, I'll probably make more water pumps over there and then pull... Or water extractors. I also need pumps. And then pull the water over there and then have the um, aluminium scrap uh, manufacturers like that. And then have... Four more forges here, and the three um, I, I I think those are forges, and those are assemblers. Um, so I get four more there, and then the forges at the end, or maybe behind, depending on the space. I should have built these six a little bit further that way, but um, that's too late to uh, consider now. I also built the radar tower up here, and there doesn't seem to be any nasties here now, thankfully, because there was at least four of them here. This is also a pure node, but the map has been revealed rather extensively thanks to this radar probably rename it and to name bauxite mine um, let's go back down just have a look quickly at the uh, the main mount post down there got the refining part I'm as I said I don't think I'm bother adding that depends i don't think we need that much uh outlawed aluminium sheets anyways that should be fine but um i'd like to see if there's actually room i'm going to leave these ramps here until i'm done with uh making that decision what i can do although it's going to be annoying, is move those forges a little bit further that way. Because I don't think I have room for four more of these in addition to three forges at the end. Maybe. I'm not going behind here anyways. The question is where the lift should end up. That I'm not certain about. Definitely not there, because now it's going directly into that uh, heavy oil residue. So probably higher up. But, um, yeah. If I need more aluminium outlet sheets, we'll build that. If not, I'll just leave it as is. Might have fun with the hypertube thing, though. Also, a couple of you have uh, asked about trains. Yes, I I will play around with trains, but I've actually left that very specifically to the very end of the series. And the reason for that is I don't want to have these massive train stations... Um, and the train lines 
on the railways. Uh, when I build the railways, I want them to be on foundations. And I have a very specific idea in mind of what I want it to look like, but it's going to involve a fair amount of work. Because as you can see, let me just repeat that. As you can see, a railway fits perfectly on one foundation. It's very sensitive. So you don't need uh, several foundations in the wild. But I have this plan of making this an elevated thing. But I'll leave that as a surprise for you guys when I actually get around to it. Uh, another challenge with the rails is, of course, the uh, terrain distance. I mean, one of the products that I intend to transport by rail is up on mountains. And you could... you have seen the, the, uh, the height of those lifts where I'm transporting bauxite. So it's going to be quite some challenge in terms of... Uh, making sure that the height, uh, distance, and so forth is okay. And that also involves having to experiment with the ramps and the rails, because I have no idea if the rails are going to be respecting the ramps. We can test that just for fun. If I build a railway from there, and then I build it to the middle of this ramp here. Like so. Now, if I wanted to build a railway all the way down here, is it going to respect the ramp? No, it isn't. It isn't going to respect it at all. I can't just use ramps as the... Because uh, it makes that funky bend there. So the height is going to be uh, a challenge to uh, traverse when it comes to the railways. But as again, I'll get around to that when I get to that point, which is not going to be today. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed the episode. As always, uh, please leave comments and questions in the commentary section. And to the person who reminded me that I had forgotten a corner of... Uh, I think it was the rubber and down at the other side of the uh, mall. Thank you so much. I have upgraded that belt as well because there was a tiny bit of belt there that I forgot to upgrade. So with that, I will see you all in the next episode.